Um, a question in the chat. Um, I, oh, yes, a, a question just appeared. Um, while being sick, I tried to practice mindful breathing. However, due to several body aches, I could not focus on the breath. What could be done in such a situation? Please advise me. So the person is saying that when they were sick, they were trying to to practice mindfulness of breathing, but because they were in pain, it was difficult. So what's your advice in a situation like this? You said uh, when you are doing mindfulness of breathing, you have body ache? Yes. Uh, do you have any other reason for the body ache? Uh, that wasn't my question, Bante. Um, it was uh, somebody's <laughs> question in the post, but my understanding reading it is that the person was sick and so they had body aches because they were sick and they were trying yeah. to practice mindfulness of breathing and because yeah. of body aches, it was difficult to focus on the breath. So yeah. what is a situation like that? It's a sickness, Bante. It is due to the sickness. Huh? It is due to the sickness that the lot of pains in legs and back and arms. So the mind was out of the breath, but the with the pain. I see. Due to sickness, you have aches yes. and pain, and then, and then you try to breathe. That aches and pain increases, right? Yes, Bante. Okay. Please okay. help. Now, <clears throat> now, anyway, you are breathing, don't you? I do breathe, but my, my mind goes to the pains, Doc Bante, unlike the other days. Okay. Anyway, you yes. breathe very slowly. Don't try to breathe very quickly. Breathe very slowly. And uh, then at the same time, you see, you can try, you may try to practice uh, metta meditation. You may verbalize metta, like, uh, may I be well, happy, and peaceful. May no harm come to me. May no difficulties come to me. May no problems come to me. May I always uh, be successful in spiritual practice. And may I also have patience, courage, understanding, and determination to meet and overcome inevitable difficulties problems and failures in life. Like this, you can practice metta towards yourself while you are slowly breathing. Perhaps that might help you to breathe without pain. Okay, you may try that. Okay? Thank you, Bhante. The next question is, could you please you. could you please explain the two terms, Arya Samadhi and non-Arya Samadhi? What oh. is the difference? Okay, Arya Samadhi and non-Arya Samadhi. Uh, non-Arya non Samadhi is uh, Samadhi ends up in uh, uh, desire. Uh, what do you call uh, uh, desire, uh, pleasure, and desire, and calmness. With the calmness, you have a desire for calmness, and yet you have concentration. That is called samadhi. But Arya Samadhi is called Vivekanisita, Viraganisita, Nirvanisita, Vasagya Parinamin. Arya Samadhi is uh, 
Arizamadi depends on uh, seclusion, depends on abandoning, depends on cessation, uh, and it ends up in abandoning all desires and liberating the mind from defilements. That is Arya Samadhi. So that is why in the Noble Eightfold Path, Samma Samadhi is mentioned. Mitya Samadhi is there, Samma Samadhi is there. Mitya Samadhi has almost the same uh, uh, way of practicing, but one becomes attached to that concentration. That's Samadhi. And therefore, you will not be able to liberate your mind from defilements. Attachment is one of the defilements. Desire, lust, craving, and so forth. Uh, when you have uh, that kind of samadhi, your craving temporarily subsides, but you, at the same, as soon as you get good up, you like that state like that attainment, uh, you have desire. And because of that desire, you may gain a certain, uh, uh, I mean, you have defilement. But because of your concentration, you may gain some benefits. All are mundane. <coughs> uh, Supramundane or Arizamadi is just the opposite of that. When you gain Arizamadi, you see things as they really are, as Buddha mentioned in many times, samahitang chittang yathabhutang pajanati. Concentrated mind sees things as they really are. Things here means form, feeling, perception, thought, and consciousness, meaning our aggregates, five aggregates. These are things we see when we gain right concentration. And also right concentration actually arises in the Arya Chitta, Arya Magga, Samang, you know. Noble mind and those who are in noble uh, practice. And you will not become attached to it. Because you know when you become attached to it, that would... Uh, lead to uh, clinging uh, and then becoming, committing commas and then rebirth and so forth, as you know, in according to dependent origination. Uh, therefore, the Arya Samadhi is the way out of samsara, non-Arya Samadhi is the way into sansara. There's a big, big difference between these two. Okay? Thank you, Bhante. The next question is, is the story of the mass murderer, Angulimala, intended to show the Buddha's ability to guide anyone to liberation? Or also to show that even the worst acts can be left behind and liberation achieved? Okay. The Angulimala actually did not have any intention to kill people. He had the intention to take only one finger from each person. Of course, in the process, they would bleed to death. And he, he, so since many people died, uh, the news spread around that he was a serial killer. His intention was not to kill. The story behind the, behind Angulimala's uh, becoming a killer is when he was uh, learning in a boarding school. There were he was very very smart. Actually, his name was Innocent Ahingsaka. Innocent. Uh, he was actually innocent person, and also very smart in learning. Other students uh, were very jealous of him. And 
Angulimala was a, a favorite of the teacher. Then the, those who are uh, jealous of him fabricated a story that uh, they told their teacher that Angulimala had some affair with his wife, which he was utter lie. So the teacher was very upset about it. He did not inquire, but he believed because so many students went and reported to him. Since so many reported, he believed in it. You know, any lie, if, if, if uh, repeated many, 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 many times, you, you tend to believe it. So his teacher believed that the Angulimala had affairs with his wife, and then he wanted to kill him. So he did not want to kill him because that would be very bad reputation for his name, for his uh, school, and therefore he, had, he waited until everybody finished the course of study. At the end, they all give some gifts to the teacher. When Angulimala went to give his t uh, gift to the teacher, the teacher said, no, 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 I don't accept this, but you must bring me 1,000 fingers from 1,000 people. So the Angulimala was very faithful, very sincere, honest, and obedient, and he would do anything for his teacher. So he went out with a sword in his hand and went on killing. His intention was not to kill. I mean, his intention was to get fingers. Anyway, when his karma uh, uh, was ripened, the Buddha appeared to be there. His karma to become uh, enlightened uh, was ripened, Buddha appeared there and uh, taught him the Dhamma, and Buddha straight away stopped, asked him to stop killing, and he stopped it, and the Buddha preached him the danger of killing and uh, hurting, and then instantly he gave up, and soon he became a monk, Buddha, Buddha made him a monk, and then he attained liberation. So, uh, <clears throat> Buddha had such a marvelous, wonderful way of teaching, and that is what he did to convert the murderer to a saint. That is called Desana Patiarya, miracle of teaching. That is the miracle that the Buddha performed. That is the miracle that the Buddha educated us to practice. Not any other magic. So, advice, giving the right advice at the right time to the right person to make him, if he were uh, evil, murderer, serious killer, to convert him to an, an innocent and, and uh, uh, normal and saintly person. So Buddha brought his name, uh, brought, um, put him back to his, uh, his meaning of his name, which was innocent, Ahinsaka. So Ahinsaka, uh, the one who hurt others, became Ahinsaka. That is the Buddha's very special skill in uh, teaching Dhamma. Okay? Thank you, Bhante. The next question is, would you say that maintaining continuity of mindfulness is more like wood fire, which does not disappear all at once? Or would you say that maintaining continuity of mindfulness should be more like maintaining a green traffic light, which when it disappears, does so all at once and all together? 
So mm -hmm. maintaining continuity of mindfulness, is it like a, more something that goes gradually like a wood fire or something like a green light that disappears all at once? How mm -hmm. How is it? Mindfulness does not disappear all at once. Mindfulness remains uh, with you uh, all the time. However, because of your uh, not repeating it. When you do not repeat anything, then it becomes weaker and weaker and weaker. Then gradually you may even forget. And therefore, in order to keep up with your mindfulness, you must repeat it. It is not one time uh, practice. Uh, it is a, a repetitive practice. You got to repeat it again and again and to refresh your mindfulness so that uh, it will not disappear. Uh, it's not like a traffic light. Uh, traffic light, once green is gone, you have uh, yellow and red. And then after that, uh, green may come out of certain seconds, certain minutes. Uh, mindfulness is not like that. This uh, simile may not uh, fit the explanation of mindfulness. So uh, you have to maintain it, uh, maintain the continuity of mindfulness uh, all the time. Otherwise, it will gradually fade away and then you have to start it again. Even if it fades away, restarting is not difficult because you have real mindfulness training, mindfulness practice. Due to certain circumstantial factors, you may forget it temporarily, or you may not have time uh, to focus your mind on the mindfulness practice. Uh, and it doesn't matter that it will disappear. It won't happen. Once you establish it, it remains with you. Okay? Thank you, Bente. The next question is, does an intentional wholesome action to have less desire, um, an intention for renunciation or right understanding, does this not fall into the cycle of dependent origination? Could you give an example of an action that is not preceded by intention, deliberation, and underlying tendencies, as described on page 57 of the new book? Um, I'm, I don't have it handy to read page 57, but um, can you give an example of an action not preceded by intention, deliberation, or underlying tendencies? Yes, uh... Inten intentional wholesome actions uh, to desire, uh, to arouse a desire to be desireless is very important practice. Uh, you can reduce your desire and uh, you un the way to re reduce your desire actually is also really a factor dependent origination because uh, you see the benefit of reducing dependent on the, on the benefit of reducing your uh, desire you intend to cultivate more uh, wholesome desire to reduce more uh, desire unwholesome desire and so this is very important practice uh, Otherwise, if you do not uh, remember and uh, you temporarily your uh, unwholesome desire may suspend or subside, but it will come back again. Uh, for instance, uh, uh, you intend to uh, be uh, be kind, uh, be friendliness, practice friendliness, friendliness. Uh, but if you don't do it and put it into action, 
uh, it will never uh, produce results. So we intend to pro develop a uh, metta or sadha or uh, wisdom, mindfulness, all the factors of enlightenment, and so forth. If you just intend and not to do it, not do it, then it will not develop. Therefore, uh, the very good example is that that uh, you put it into action, uh, your intention, and then it will become your your practice will be reinforced. Uh, if you don't do it, as I mentioned in the other answers, the previous uh, uh, the answer to the previous question, uh, you uh, will forget what you have been doing if you don't repeat it. Just mere intention itself is not enough. Uh, you, have to, you have to put it into practice. Okay? Thank you, Bhante. The next question is, is there a difference between meditating with mindfulness of the breath and concentrating on the breath? Ah, okay. Uh, mindfulness of breath and concentration of breath uh, are actually different things. When you focus your mind on con on the on the breath without doing anything else, you gain concentration. You may even attain jhanas, uh, first, second, third, and fourth, and so on. But if you use, if you use the mind the breathing for the development of mindfulness, you will see the uh, impermanent uh, of impermanent nature of the breath feeling, perception, thought, and consciousness. Actually, it is so important that uh, <coughs> in uh, uh, Anguttara Nikaya, there is a discourse called Marana Sati. Marana Sati. Uh, discourse. Mindfulness of uh, death. Uh, Buddha praised it very highly. So one day Buddha asked monks, do you practice mindfulness of death? Venerable sir, one said, one monk said, Venerable sir, I do practice, and uh, if I live uh, uh, one whole day, I can practice mindfulness, that time is enough. I can practice mindfulness of death. Another monk said, if I live long enough to go out and collect my own food and eat it, if I live that long, I can practice mindfulness of death. Another monk said, if I uh, eat one morsel of food, and if I live that long, till it, till I put it into my mouth, chew it, munch it, and swallow, that time is enough for me to practice mindfulness of death. Another monk said, Venerable well, Sir, if I live long enough, uh, to take one breath and exhale it, that time, that time that I take to breathe in and breathe out is enough for me to practice mindfulness of death. That means when you focus the mind on the breath, you have to see mindfulness of death means mindfulness of impermanence and you need mindfulness even such a short time as you are breathing in and out would be enough for somebody who has been practicing mindfulness of impermanence impermanence that quick because when you breathe in you see air particles waves of air moving in and out and air waves means very tiny minute immeasurable size of waves changing at just like subatomic particles 
changing, 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 and going into the lungs, and it does it leaves this oxygen in the lungs with the red blood cells, and then uh, oxygen free air yeah, again move out as carbon dioxide moves out slowly, 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 slowly. And in each inhaling and exhaling, you see that change. That is how you see impermanence. If your mind is sharp enough to see that kind of impermanence, you definitely practice mindfulness using the breath. Okay? Thank you, Bhante. What is Vitaka and Vichara? Could you please explain the stages leading up to them and the stages after? Okay. Vitak and Vichara has been translated into English in a very confusing way. I personally do not agree with that confusing way. Confusing way is Vitaka is, uh, uh, they have given a simile like a bee. Uh, uh, buzzing around the the flower, uh, no, uh, yeah, getting close and uh, touching the uh, flower, and which are means uh, moving around the flower. First, he sat on the flower, and then he moves around the flower. That simile and that explanation doesn't make any sense with regard to the mindfulness practice. In especially in jhana practice. What vitaka means, Buddha, we, we always must try to interpret the Dhamma exactly as Buddha explained in various places, and we try to understand that. Uh, vitaka is called Sankhapa. Uh, sankhapa. Vitaka, Sankhapa, you can see in Vibhanga, Madhya, uh, Vabhidhamma, and various places. Uh, Vitaka, Sankhapa are the same. Sankhapa in Noble Eightfold Path is Samma Sankhapa. Samma Sankhapa. Samma Sankhapa means Nekama Sankhapa, Avyapada Sankhapa, Avinsa Sankhapa. Nekama Sankhapa means letting go, renunciation. When do we let go in the jhana practice is we let go of our hindrances. Kama Chanda, Kama Chanda, abandon it. Vyapada, abandon it. Thinamid, abandon it. Restlessness, worry, abandon it. And doubt, abandon. Abandoning all these unwholesome mistakes is called Vitaka. Vitaka, that means deliberately, mindfully, we let go of them. Vichara means we sustain that particular state of or maintain that once it is gone, let it go. That means uh, uh, you don't uh, try to bring it back. Once it is gone, let it go. That is Vichara. And this is what happens when we try to practice uh, what you call Samma Samadhi right concentration. And we have to use the noble factors in the noble eightfold path to collaborate with the attainment of jhana. Uh, and therefore, as Buddha said, uh, the seven factors of the noble eightfold path are supporting right concentration, last one. Uh, they are auxiliary factors supportive factors, reinforcing factors of the last factor. Uh, so, some uh, right understanding, right will, uh, right intention and so forth, all this support, right concentration. And therefore, Vitaka is the second step of the Noble Eightfold Path. And that is how I understand it. I think that, in my mind, makes sense. The other explanation may be for some other uh, 
Indian tradition that was prevalent in the Buddha's time. Okay, any other question? <clears throat> uh, I don't see one in the chat, but I have a question, Bhante. Okay. When, um, when we hear about the jhanas, we form a concept in the mind to try and understand what they are. Uh, and especially for the higher jhanas, for example, when we hear about um, that the experience of the infinity of consciousness, for example, we form an image in the mind of what that is. Is this concept somehow biasing our experience of the jhanas? Is it interfering with our ability to see things as they are when we have a concept of what the jhanas are? Right. Okay, when we have uh, two sets of uh, concentration, one is uh, called Rupa Jhana, uh, fine material uh, attainment, other is immaterial attainment, fine material attainment is Uddhita Dhamma Sukhaviyara, uh, enjoying, experiencing happiness in this real life, other is Santa Vimokha, the Immaterial jhanas are called Santa Vimokha, peaceful liberation. Now, what we have to understand, even in a, if you see Anupada Sutta in Madhyamanika, Sutta number 111, when the Sariputta attained all these mental states, and he knew even in the, uh, what do you call, uh, infinite consciousness, there are more factors than only infinite consciousness. And they all are present. He said that they were, uh, he saw them rising and remaining and passing away. Uh, he, saw, he saw them very clearly. And therefore there are mental factors even in the highest level of uh, Santa Vimokka, peaceful attainment. Even Neva Sanya, Nasanya, neither perception nor non-perception uh, is a very subtle mental state. So we have to have a certain theoretical understanding of it uh, in order to uh, practice and recognize the state one has attained. That this recognition is not verbal, but it is just mentally become aware of that particular mental state. Uh, okay. Thank you, Bronte. I think I skipped one. Uh, is there a way to make one's progress faster in the practice? A progress after the practice? To make faster progress in the practice, how do you uh, speed up your progress in the practice? Faster, accelerate it. Yeah, accelerate your progress. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I, I must repeat the same answer. To accelerate the practice is the practice itself. You keep practicing, 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 then it comes to you very quickly. Nikamalabi. Akichalabi, Akasiralabi, Buddha said, Nikamalabi. It comes freely, Nikam Mahambino, Nikamalabi, Akichalabi. You, you, you gain it without much uh, difficulty. Akasiralabi. Yet you gain it uh, you, without uh, too much uh, struggling and effort and so forth. Because you have been doing it again and again and again. So it becomes just like, you know, breathing. Very simple, very quick, you attain it. And therefore, that is that is exactly what we have to do to make it easy. Okay? There is no any other way. You keep doing it, then you become... Say, for instance, uh, you want to sit to meditate. At the beginning, it is very, very, very painful. I remember somebody saying, I, I, I kill myself rather than sitting and meditating because <laughs> meditation is so painful. Somebody said that. But if those people keep practicing again and again with determination, 
with commitment, understanding, and uh, spiritual urgency. I want to get rid of this samsaric suffering. I want to practice it. Keep practicing, practicing, practice. Practicing makes it easier. Practice makes perfect. So, anything for that matter, mundane or supramundane, keep practicing. Without practice, you cannot achieve it. It doesn't come automatically as AI, no breed, and so forth. We have to do it. Okay, Chaturi, thank you very much. Thank you very much for all of, all of you for asking this. Very, very good questions. Keep asking. I like to answer questions, provided they are according to Dhamma. Uh, and uh, so I think we must end this session uh, of answering questions now. Now let us do meditation. Okay. Okay. May all beings be happy and secure. May all beings have happy minds. Whatever living beings there may be, without exception, weak or strong, long, large, medium, short, subtle or gross, visible or invisible, living near or far, born or coming to birth, may all beings have happy minds. Let no one deceive another, no despise anyone anywhere, neither from anger nor ill will should anyone wish harm to another. As a mother who risks her own life to protect her only child, even so towards all living beings, one should cultivate a boundless heart. One should cultivate all the world a heart of boundless loving friendliness, above, below, and all around, unobstructed, without hatred or resentment, whether standing, walking, sitting, lying down, no whenever awake. One should develop this mindfulness. This is called divinely dwelling here, not falling into erroneous views, but virtuous and endowed with vision, removing desire for sensual pleasures, one comes never again to birth in the womb. With this metta thought, friends, let us meditate for at least next 25 minutes.
By means of this meritorious deeds, may I never join with the foolish. May I join always with the wise until the time and attain Nibbana. May the suffering be free from suffering. May the fear stuck be free from fear. May the grieving be free from grief. So too may all beings be. From the highest realm of existence to the lowest, May all beings arisen in these realms, with form and without form, with perception and without perception, be released from all suffering and attain to perfect peace. Excellent, excellent, excellent. With this friends, we end this session. And I want to share my special metta with everybody especially those who are suffering in the hospitals, great response of the world, taken care of by very compassionate doctors, nurses, hospital staff. May they all recover very soon and find time to practice meditation and liberate from samsaric suffering. May all those professional doctors, nurses, hospital staff who are taking care of these people. May they also find time to practice meditation and liberate themselves from samsaric suffering. May all others who have lost their loved ones and grieving, may they again be free from grief and find time to understand the Dhamma, the nature of life and be liberated from samsaric suffering. May all others who are in trouble, sports, war zones, poverty stricken, discrimination, wherever they are, find time to practice Dhamma, meditation. Dhamma is universal, it's not somebody's uh, special possession, it is open to everybody. Practice that Dhamma and liberate from samsaric suffering. May those who, all those who are in the northern direction be well, happy and peaceful. North eastern direction be well, happy and peaceful. Eastern direction be well, happy and peaceful. Southeastern direction be well, happy and peaceful. Being in the southern direction be well, happy and peaceful. Those who are in southwestern direction be well, happy, and peaceful. Western direction, be being a, uh, be, be free from, be well, happy, and peaceful. Northwestern direction, being be well, happy, and peaceful. Being above, below, all of them in ten directions, be well, happy, and peaceful, and all of them liberate from. Sansaric suffering. Thank you, friends, once again. Again, I want to mention uh, next Saturday, <coughs> I start our, uh, we start our monastic retreat. Uh, of course, we start it tomorrow, and it goes on. And next Saturday, I will have my Zoom talk. Uh, combining with this monastic uh, talk, uh, starting at uh, 9 o'clock, 9 to 9.30 or 9.45 we meditate, and then start my talk till 10.30, at uh, 10.40. And uh, please try to join. It's with the same uh, Zoom link. You can join if you like. Uh, Bhante, let 
about the other talks from the monastic retreats, the one during the weekdays? Will these be available to listen to? Will that also be on Zoom if people want to join? Or is it simply just from the monastics? No, no, anybody can join it. Anybody can join it. Same uh, link. In person or in uh, on Zoom. Uh, but we specialize on uh, those who are uh, <coughs> meditating, those who have knowledge of Dhamma. Uh, my topic could be Maha Satipatthana Sutta. I explain that Sutta in detail. I give five Dhamma talks, all of them based on Maha Satipatthana Sutta. The discourse on the what do you call it? Uh, great discourse on the establishment of mindfulness discourse that you find in our Vandana book in Adhija Nikaya, uh, the discourse, lo lo the uh, long discourses, and you may find it online in various places. If you like to read it, read and then I will explain it in more detail. So, this is the topic. Yeah. Do, uh, somebody's asking at what time will the talks be during the week? Every day my talk will be at uh, uh, 9.40 right. to 10.40. Thank you, Bante. Okay. Thank you, Bante. Thank okay. you, Bante. Okay. Thank you, Bante. 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 Thank you, Bante.